The recommended daily calcium intake for a 20-year-old is 1,000 milligrams. One cup of milk contains 299 milligrams of calcium, and one cup of juice contains 261 milligrams of calcium. Which of the following inequalities represents the possible number of cups of milk M and cups of juice J a 20-year-old could drink in a day to meet or exceed the recommended daily calcium intake from these drinks alone? Looking at the choices, we have to set up an inequality, and we're given a couple of variables that represent one is the cup of milk, which is M, the other is the cups of juice, which is J, and we need to put together some sort of inequality that will show, given a number of cups of milk and juice that this 20-year-old drinks, how many milligrams of calcium will they drink, and is that over 1,000? So let's say the M, we're told, is the cups of milk, and each cup of milk is going to provide you with 299 milligrams of calcium. So the number of milligrams of calcium from the milk is going to be 299 times M, right? 299 milligrams per cup. So therefore, if you have M cups, you just multiply them. So this is going to be milligrams of calcium. And then we are going to do uh, cups of juice. Each contain 261 milligrams. So J is the number of cups of juice. So the milligrams of calcium from this is going to be 261 times J. So if you drink M cups of juice and J cups of M cups of milk and J cups of juice, how many milligrams of calcium will you be consuming? Well, it's going to be 299 M plus 261 J. And we want to know when will this meet or exceed the recommended daily calcium intake, which is 1,000 milligrams? So when is this, in other words, greater than or equal to, meet, which is the equal to, or exceed, which is the greater than, 1,000 milligrams? So we look at the choices, and that is choice A. On this first question, I think we see a couple of important trends revealed by the College Board here in terms of what's going to be important for the new SAT, for the math in particular. On a minor note, this is a question that wouldn't be unreasonable on the new, on the current SAT. Uh, you don't often set up an inequality. Usually, you set up equations. You trans what I call translating uh, a real scenario into an equation. Yeah, I mean that's not unusual. I think it's a bit unusual to do it in an inequality, but again, this could very well appear on the new SAT. I think, though, what this question shows that's a bit different is two things. Number one the focus on real life scenarios. They're going to be focusing on, in this case, science. I was going to say when I was doing this question, boy, it feels like I'm doing chemistry right now. And that's kind of the point. They're going to be twisting all their questions, whether it's math, reading, or writing, to make them based on more genres. So more stuff, math and history and sociology and all these kinds of topics. So here we see a math question that, yeah, it's math ultimately, but it uses the language, the veneer of science. But in the end, if you can see through the veneer, as I'm going to say multiple times, if you can see through the superficial layer of what this question seems to be about, which is about milligrams of calcium, which is essentially you know, chemistry, if you can see through that, really it's just a math problem. Uh, so that's one thing. The second issue is there's just a lot of reading here, and I think that's what you're going to see on a lot of these questions. There's a lot more to read, a lot more to parse, whereas in the old SAT, they were very much questions that were straightforward forward in their brevity, at least most of the time. Occasionally you get some long-winded question, but certainly on the new test, they're moving a lot more towards long-winded questions. So your reading ability will be as important as ever in order to answer these questions.